we're going to start out by um, talking about adding trims to items and um, putting trims on, removing trims, things like that. So that's what we'll talk about first. Now, adding a trim in Ethos basically requires you to select the second item and put a trim on it. A trim command is for it activates the trimmers on your machine. Usually takes five to ten seconds to, to do the trim. So um, you kind of what you want to do is you want to try to watch and, and be careful of where you're doing trims in order to make your production work the best. Now I'm just going to take and put a couple of items on the screen. Whoops, let's try this again. I'm going to put a couple of fill stitch items on the screen. And then I'll take this and I'm going to copy and paste it. And then I'll paste it again. And I'll paste it again. So we've got four items on here. Now, these four items that you see on the screen right now are all the same color. Just a real quick note, if they were separate colors, then I would not need to add any trims. The, the software is going to trim, or the machine is going to trim anyway, because of the fact that it has to change to a different needle to continue sewing. Okay, So if there's a color change in there, you don't have to put any trims in. Now, if they're all the same color, you will notice that between each of these four items is a connecting, <clears throat> excuse me, a connecting stitch. Here's one here, which goes from the first item into the second. Here's one here, which goes to the third. And there's one there, which goes into the fourth. So those are my jump stitches. Because it's the same color, and because that I've not told it to put any trims in there, that's why I have those connection stitches. Now, if I want the machine to trim, as I said earlier, I pick what I want it to trim before. So, for example, right now, it's sewing this, and then it's sewing this. Okay? I pick this item. I have to click on the edge. If I try to click here in the middle, I'm not going to select it. I have to select it on the edge. This is my trim command or my cutter command. I turn it on. You can see now that the button appears to be pressed in. At this point, I regenerate my stitches. Now you'll see that I have a dashed line going over. The machine is going to know to stop and cut when it goes to that item. Now we're going from this circle down to this circle. I select that one, turn on my trim, regenerate my stitches. And then from this to from this one to this one, I select this one, turn it on, and regenerate. Now you can see that I have trims on all of those circles. Okay? Now it works the other way. If there is a trim and I don't want one, again, I select the item. This time I'll turn the cutter feature off, regenerate my stitches, and now you can see that I've got the solid line back. Okay? Now, let's say that we're working with lettering. Okay? I'm going to go T for text. I'm going to pick a font. I'll just type in a couple of letters. Now, here, if I generate my stitches and I zoom in, you'll see that I have a connection stitch between each character. There it is on the A to the B. There it is to the B to the C is right here. And here it is from the C to the D. Okay? I've not put any trims there. Alright, first off, 
if I want to trim between every letter. If I know that I'm doing just a name on a bag or whatever, and I want the machine to trim between each one, that's real easy. I click on the edge. I turn on my cutter. Okay? So see it's turned on. I regenerate my stitches. Now if I zoom in, you can see that between all of these letters, I have a dashed line. Okay? So that's pretty easy. Turn it off. Restitch. Now I don't have a trim between each one. Now, let's get a little more detailed. Let's say that I want to trim between the A and the B, but not the B and the C or the C and the D. In that case, I hit T for text. So I'm back in text mode. I highlight the B. Hey guys, I'm getting some feedback. I'm going to have to, I'm going to mute you guys and uh, we just have to uh, type in some questions. Sorry about that. Um, so I highlight the B, turn on my cutter, my trim command, and regenerate the stitches. Now, there's one other way that I can add the trim. If I go in, and you'll notice that every character has a crosshair. There it is on the C, there it is on the D, there it is on the B, there it is on the A. Okay? Now, instead of hitting T for text and highlighting the letter like we just did, if I'm, if I'm just within, within my select arrow here, and I hold down the letter S for Sam, I can click on the crosshair, and it will select that character. Turn on my trim command, regenerate my stitches. Okay? So the way that works is, okay, right, right now there's no trim between the C and the D. Hold down my S, select the D on the crosshair, right there, and then turn on my cutter and restitch. Okay? Now, if I go into my snapshot tool, which is view and snapshot, I click on the first button, the view blocks, not lettering, but anything else, it will show me if I have a trim on the item. You can see that I have a trim on this circle and this circle. It has a little T in front of it. I do not have a trim on the fourth one. And if we look over here, see we have a solid stitch going over there. So there's not a trim there. Okay? Now, let's imagine that this file, let's do this. Let's turn off all the trims in this lettering. Restitch. Make sure they're off. Okay, they're off. Now, what if this design was an expanded stitch file that I had purchased or that I had somebody had digitized for me? Something like that. And all of a sudden, I decided that I wanted to add a trim. Well, we're going to have a problem. If we go in to these two circles and select them, oh, usually, well, like, for example, up here in my lettering, see how it's all joined together? Well, how can I select an item to put a trim on it if it's all joined together? If I want to do that, I have to break it apart. I have to go to Stitches, Block, Split, and Lock. And that gives me my knife blade. I can then, with that knife blade, left click, left click, over the area where I want to cut it. Once I do that and I hit my right mouse button, it adds the trim in there for me. Okay? 
if it just so happens that they are separate items but they don't have a trim, like in the case of these circles, I can select the circle, turn on my cutter. Now, I'm not regenerating because there are already stitches there. So I just come up here to redraw and refresh my screen and you can see now that I have that cutter in there. So basically it works the same way but there could be a chance that you have to break it apart before adding that trim. These C and the D, actually the C and the D and the B are all joined as one piece. Well how can I break, how can I get that trim in there? Stitches, block, Split and lock, left click, left click, left click, left click, and then hit my right mouse button. It automatically, by doing that, breaks it apart into different sections, and it goes ahead and adds the trim for me. See the dashed line there? Okay, so, so split and lock does that for me. Now again, the split and lock feature is only for designs that I did not digitize. Okay, that, that split and lock feature, the only time you use it is if you're working on a stock design or a design that somebody sent you that was a DST file. Okay, so that's our trims. We'll probably talk some more about them in um, when we're uh, doing some digitizing.